the Cigar Nerds Podcast. Hey, welcome to Cigar Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Smokin' Joe. I'm Brad Jackson. And, uh, you've got, like, like a classic cigar there, uh, digging deep in the humidor this week, huh? Yeah, I, I found the, uh... The OG run of the Rocky Patel Super Hero. I mean, dude, we were buying like multiple boxes of these things. I like, miss those. I mean, Rocky I, needs to bring them back. I think like the inception of the podcast. This might have been the opening cigar, and this would be a cigar from that same batch that fell to the bottom of my humidor that I didn't realize I had, and I'm like. People talk about aging cigars. I wonder what a 10-year-old smoke's going to taste like. I mean, as long as it's like humidity's been maintained, it shouldn't be. As long as you don't get like, you know, a moldy cigar. Like an aged cigar works. Moldy cigar, no. No, nah, well, man. I'm... I mean, thing still looks uh, pristine, you know? No no mold or anything. I know how to maintain my... Uh, my... I'm good at maintaining my humidor. I'm not good at maintaining my inventory and rotating and not letting stuff get buried. Yeah, I, I barely maintain my humidor because it's always empty. It's like I smoke too much. I don't, I don't have anything to age. Uh, well, I am smoking uh, an Asylum Midnight Oil, uh, which is Ecuadorian Habano wrapper over Connecticut binder and uh, Dominican fillers. And unfortunately, like I said, I bought it for the name because uh, I was like, we're talking some horror movies this week. And I thought, yeah, Asylum Midnight Oil. Didn't realize it was flavored. So, yeah, I'm getting hints of apricot and uh, like a tea, which it's not, say, is like s- super sweet. But that initial light up hit was uh, when I was not expecting sweetness. I was like, ah, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but now that I've you know got it lit and smoking a little bit of it, the, the sweetness has kind of gotten a little bit lighter. So it's a. Uh, not as uh, shocking as it was when I first uh, first lit it up. Yeah, that uh, that initial light and in your reaction, I was like, haha, it was like a horror movie in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, it's you know, unexpected sweetness uh, when I'm like expecting cigar flavors is kind of kind of weird. But uh, speaking of kind of weird, this is our you know second October episode, and we're going we're talking some new and old horror movie we're we're gonna finally talk about terrifier yeah you finally uh jumped on the bandwagon after me trying to get you on the bandwagon <laughs> it's like i was only familiar with art from the memes and i'm like and you're like hey there's a new one coming out we should like talk about that and i was like well i haven't seen the old one so let me marathon that shit this week and go see terrifier 3 and i, I i'm sold now and if you've got to fight off a killer clown, you should call in the Strike Force. Strikeforceenergy.com. Use your promo code SCARNERDS for 20% off your order. Uh, yeah, at least you'll die caffeinated. Or maybe you'll prevail. Who knows? Not everybody dies at the end. Maybe. <laughs> you either die or you get severely fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with with that, uh, let's, uh, let's do this work of art here. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're talking clowns. We're going to do a little clowning around today. Mm. Gosh, how long did it take you to put that one together? <laughs> I feel like you stirred all night like, haha, I'm going to be punny. <laughs> punny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're we're talking about Terrifier 3, but since we've not talked about Terrifier 1, 2, or All Hallows Eve, we'll probably mention some of those things as well. I gotta say, initial uh, impression. I I, lo- I like the Terrifier series because, you know, I think we've said before that like old school flash flasher, <laughs> old school slasher films are probably my favorite horror genre, and we don't really have those anymore. Everything's more like paranormal or psychological we don't really have the good like old school slasher and watching this made me think i was watching something from the 70s or 80s in a good way not like oh this looks like shit it looks like it was made in the 80s but no it was like 
I mean, it did kind of, yeah, at least the first couple did kind of look like shit, but, but in a good way. I mean, I felt like I mean, this thing's like from, you know, 2016, to, you know, like it's a, mo- a movie of the modern era, but it really had that feel of classic 80s slasher. Well, that was one of the reasons I wanted to turn you on to the Terrifier, Terrifier franchise is because, you know, you're always like, eh. You know, can they really do this with the modern PC and, you know, everything else? And, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, they absolutely can. Um, but there's twists and stuff that you typically don't see. Like, and, and that, that was the other thing that I really liked about, you know, the, the franchise is it's not just a slasher. Like, when it comes to art, like, all things are on the table. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Like we're we're typically you know um, like Jason didn't kill children. Uh, my, I mean Michael Myers killed the old and stuff like that, but like fucking Art does not give a fuck. He he'll kill goddamn Santa Claus. It's like you know it's like children, pets, and you know everything. You know everything is on the like no one is safe uh, from Art. But also I think kind of in the probably in the two thousands or so, like there was this turn in not like slasher movies, but it was like torture porn became a thing where it was like movies were graphic. Just like, let's see how graphic we can get like for like the hostile series or uh, uh human centipede where this got super graphic, but then it would also have funny ass elements. Like I, like you're like, Oh my God, that's fucking disgusting. And then you'd be laughing your balls off 10 minutes later where some of this, you know, kind of horror, previous horror from the like the last decade was just like no i'm just gonna be uncomfortable for two hours where this is like i love it like where you're like oh that's fucked up and then you're like Haha, that's funny as shit and then it's like it's like those little breaks in the in the you know horror kind of makes it you know even better where it's like or vice versa you're laughing oh that's funny as shit and then all of a sudden something just fucking horrific happens and it just makes that horrific parts that much more like shocking when it comes from you know you were laughing like two minutes before someone got a yeah i mean it's, something it's definitely a roller coaster ass. and you know people are always like oh i like a villain that i can sort of side with and it's like you know how fucked up art is but at the same time like he's so quirky that it's like god damn it like i'm not supposed to like you but i like you <laughs> like just... like i know i would die if we tried to hang out but I still want to hang out. <laughs> I'm like the fucking, uh, you know, podcast girl from, uh, you know, Terrifier 3, where it's, um, which we'll get into that a little bit later. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, it, it's an experience. Yeah. And David uh, Howard Thornton, uh, who plays art in the Terrifiers, like he's like a legit clown. Like I've heard uh, Damon uh, Leone, the director, he's like he's, describe him as he is like Roger Rabbit in real life. And, we're and so I think used it's to, kind of interesting too. Like, but we're so know, used to like a Michael Myers or a Jason who are just like stone faced killers. Where Art is like a, I mean, we've got people like Freddy who's always wisecracking and telling jokes, but to be a voiceless killer but then be that expressive like he can convey so much like i don't know emotion for someone who doesn't say a fucking thing through three movies it's almost like Groot. yeah <laughs> uh, but it's like it's yeah it's like yeah i mean they did great by hiring like a legitimate clown to play this this fucking clown yeah, and, and you could tell, like, if you go back to, you know, before the Terrifier series, um, whatever the fuck the, the all you know, it started off as All a, Hallows Eve, like where a, a, a series of shorts, and then those shorts got combined into a anthology movie with kind of a a wraparound storyline. But the guy playing Art in those movies was not David, because it, it was uh, basically just one of the director's friends that was a makeup dude that was like, oh, this guy can stand being in the makeup for an hour or two. And uh, so when they decided, when art got kind of so popular off of that, those shorts, that they're like, all right, we're going to give him like a full length movie. 
they have like we need to you know, the guys like yeah i'm you need someone who can actually act <laughs> so and you know and he's described it as where the original dude was an actor in clown makeup where david is a fucking clown <laughs> it's like, yeah well i mean you know it it's funny to me that you know all hallows eve i mean you know there wasn't much budget for any of these films um until popularity took over but yeah cuz the first one they made the first terrifier i think was like a $50,000 budget and the it's second like one, we don't even have enough uh budget to actually like it's like you're just going to have you know pale skin around your neck and stuff like you legit <laughs> yeah. look like you're in face paint and then the second one, they tried to do like a Kickstarter to get it. Like, oh, I just need another fifty thousand dollars to make a second one. And they made like two hundred and fifty thousand. And then like, which return did like a fifteen million dollars uh, return on that first movie or second movie. So this third one got like you know a two million dollar budget. Yeah, I seen the director was like, oh, it's like cool. Like I don't have to do all the effects myself. Like I can actually hire people to do things. So I only have to direct now. <laughs> So he was like, that's why it took me so long to make Terrifier 2, because I was doing all the effects, so we'd make all the props and basically film till we ran out of props, and then we'd have to like shut production down where I went and made more <laughs> more props. <laughs> or more, you know, so it was like, you know, a very time consuming thing where like he's like, Yeah, now I get to like make an actual professional movie. <laughs> but still make it look like Terrifier. Like the just the practical. That's something I love practical effects. You know, even though they kind of look the cheapness of them makes them look cool. I mean, it's like you don't want to see something super polished in horror. You want you want that little bit of like just oh that's nasty. <laughs> like well, practical and, effects and, always look better than than uh, CGI. Well, and and I in the horror genre, you anyway. know, thank you. Definitely get your sense of nasty. Um, I, I guess you know it could be subjective. <laughs> Everything looks sticky. <laughs> so much fake blood. Uh, I wonder so what, what happens like after the shoots. Like somebody come in like pressure washer or something. Like <laughs> I could just see ants being like, ha ha ha. Are you? Are these people that are like you know just covered in blood and it's like oh it all like cooled off and congealed and now I'm stuck to the floor I need like a big spatula to <laughs> get me up god that's gonna be the terrifier four I can see that now <laughs> art barbecues a person who's over there with a you know fucking spatula trying to flip oh, him over I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it <laughs> with his uh, bag of tricks <laughs> uh, just the 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 bag of just random uh carp oh terrifier 2 his oh, the scene in the freaking halloween store that's like just key art where he like, where he's like just fucking with the uh who ends up being our final girl uh sienna shaw <laughs> where he's just like every time she turns around he's like putting on a different pair of like Halloween glasses and shit. <laughs> and then she's like, so freaked out by it. But he just like, he just like creeps up and he's holding the horn. This gets like, right. And she's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Honk. <laughs> oh. oh, that scene made me laugh. Like so hard. Just him being fucking weird shit. <laughs> just hands her, her uh backpack or purse or whatever. She's like, <laughs> Okay, time to go. But there's a lesson to be learned here. Don't piss off an evil clown. Oh, yeah, when... Uh, him trying to count out the change and stuff like that, and the clerk keeps giving him shit. He's like, you know, just so animated about, what? why are you berating me right I'm literally trying to count <laughs> your money. Yeah, like, it's like, <laughs> I could kill you and steal this horn. I'm literally trying to buy it. <laughs> and And the thing I love about Art, too, is he's such a... He doesn't just like stealth kill people. He has to have witnesses. It's like he's like it's he's a showman. Like yeah, you know, after he kills the clerk, 
He fucking stands in the like display of animatronics with the dude's head, trying to pretend to be an animatronic and like fucking with people that are coming looking in the window and shit. And it's like, he's like, I gotta just, I gotta be, I gotta put on a show. <laughs> it's for the people. Yeah, it's like you know, not that person because they're dead, but you know. <laughs> he he always wants somebody to walk in on his uh, <laughs> his you know, literal Work art. art. Yes. <laughs> And then him, just the silent laughing and shit. Uh, or even when he gets fucked up, like, he gets, like, stabbed and shit, and he's, like, you know, fucking, like, screaming and cussing, but he's not saying anything. It's, like, just, yeah. Just he's the a- whole mime <laughs> aspect. <laughs> yeah. And that, to me, is the creepiest thing of all, are mimes. I don't understand them. <laughs> or when he, uh, at the start of the second movie, when he, uh, rises from the dead and he's like man I'm, I need to like go take a get cleaned up and this goes to, like the fucking coin laundry and like gets butt naked and is just sitting there in a chair reading the paper like fucking <laughs> commenting silently on stories and shit while he's doing his laundry I was like just like the real world shit that art does like is I think is one of the things that have made him so kind of popular he's not just a well I mean it's just so easy to create meme content <laughs> yes because like i said that's kind of where i discovered uh terrifier was just from the memes i was like there's all these creepy clown memes and oh i was like because i was like yeah watch all these movies She's like i thought you didn't like clowns i'm like i never said i was scared of clowns i just don't trust clowns <laughs> and this just reinforces I'm suspicious why. of clowns <laughs> yeah never trust a clown And I like to uh, some of the interviews I've seen with uh, the director where he was like, there's not enough clowns in horror. We've got it. So he's like, when I created art, I wanted to make him the complete antithesis of Pennywise. Like Pennywise talks a lot. He doesn't. Pennywise is colorful. He's black and white. Pennywise doesn't use weapons. Fucking art will use any goddamn thing you can find. <laughs> I mean, dude breaks out machine guns and shit. <laughs> what about killer cl- clowns from outer space? Everybody forgets about those guys. Oh, yeah. But they were aliens. Does that count? <laughs> Art is... Not really sure. What is it? Just a demon? Or is he from some other place? Where... Well, <laughs> I think I... Because I... before, you know, like, in the... Like, the OG and the first Terrifier, you don't really have that sense of supernatural art. Until, like, the very end. Yes. And they don't really explain any of that in the second movie. And I guess after watching this third one, I was hoping they would, like, answer some of the questions from the second one. Where I think I texted you, I'm like, I don't know if the writer is getting better at writing or worse at writing. Because i am got more questions than I have answers. But do yourself a favor. There is an interview with the director on the uh, Dead Meat YouTube channel. And he and they finally asked him like, all right, here's what we think the story is. Can you like confirm? And he's like, he's like, basically, Art was human in the first one, and died. He did not know he was going to come back to life. Well, the pale girl from the second one is a demon, and the only way she can enter our world is through the recently dead. But it has to be someone who is truly evil. So when Art dies, she used that as her opportunity to enter our world. Now, she can't possess the living unless they've been truly, like, broken. So she's basically using art to fuck people up to the point where she can then take over their body. So that's why the first girl from, the survivor from the first movie suddenly turned evil and started killing people because she is possessed by the pale girl demon. And the pale girl demon is utilizing art. Get Sienna to eventually break. Yeah, or tries to anyway. And then supposedly, like kind of like the offset is this of this demon creating the immortal art as an anchor point to get into our world. The, I guess the yin and yang, the good forces created Sienna to to be the 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 one thing that can stop this. That's why she suddenly, you know, has a magic sword and can. <laughs> heal quickly for some some reason that they really haven't fully explained yet 
But do they need to? <laughs> and supposedly her sword can kill could kill Art. So when he got his head chopped off, but the fact that she didn't also kill the demon girl allowed the demon girl to bring him back yet again. So I guess you got to kill the set to finally finish him off completely. <laughs> or they just keep, you know, one regenerates the other, I guess. Oh my God. It's like a Deadpool. So now that supposedly the demon is, is sent back to hell, is Art still immortal? Or is he finally vulnerable in the next film? Because he survives, because you can't have a horror movie without your... your uh, Sure you can. You just do a prequel or, you know, mm -hmm. a different timeline jump. Because I felt like that's what the third one was, was a lot of different, you know, timeline jumps to some degree. Yeah, because part of it is set but, directly I mean, after part two, and then some of it's now, which supposedly is like five years later, because they just kind of decided to go into suspended animation and wait for the opportunity to kill Sienna again. Well, we gotta wait for her to get out of the nut house before we can <laughs> we can go kill her. Either that or it's like Art was still a little fucked up and he's like, well, I need to just chill and regenerate you know, for five years. And then some of it's like flashbacks to her as a little girl with her, her dad uh, making the character and basically having fucking visions. I don't know, yeah, I'm confused, but the violence was cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just love, you know, his way of directing and telling the stories, you know, where you see something and then two hours later it's like, oh, wait, the entire time, like, that was in the past. Now this is, you know, and then it's a little bit of a mind fuck. Yeah. I do like the... <sighs> Because, all right, Terrifier 2 ends with... with uh, Whoa, spoiler alert, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, this is all spoiler alert. So, you know, 1 and 2 are on Amazon Prime. You can go watch them now. And uh, I think you can get All Hallows' Eve free on... I think I'll watch it on Tubi or some shit. Uh, and I think you can pre-order Terrifier 3 whenever it hit. It's already, like, on Amazon to pre-order whenever it finally gets... That's the thing, too. This is the only movie I've ever gone to see where there was a warning label on the theater door, like entrance, like yeah, you know, it was like this tank, this film contains graphic violence. Uh, if you feel unwell, please, uh, you know, don't hesitate to to seek assistance. <laughs> I was like, I was like, basically, says, please don't puke in our in our uh, theater. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know. I, I I'll I'll say how packed was uh, the theater when you went and saw it. Oh, it wasn't. But I saw it on like a Tuesday night. Or no, I thought, yeah, I saw it on Monday. So it was like maybe four people in the theater. So I saw it on a Saturday, and it was, it was pretty packed. Um, still not a fan of the assigned seating bullshit either. Yeah, especially like because I I typically go like during the week when it's not that crowded, and they're like, "Where would you like to sit?" I'm like, "Motherfucker, that I can you, your map says there's like five people in there. Does it really matter? Like, I'll just sit wherever." <laughs> So I was always like, yeah, just give me whatever, and then I'll just sit wherever the fuck I want when I get in there, because it's, like, kind of pointless. But the, the audience... I can see it on, like, a Friday night when it's open and weekend and everything's, like, full, but, yeah, it's, like, why do I need an assigned seat on a Tuesday night? Like, it was a fun theater experience. Like, the, the audience, you know, like, the audible gasp, you know, at, at certain things, and, you know, like... I'm just emotionless, I suppose. So I don't I don't react to anything apparently, but you know, this was one that was good to see. Yeah, I would I would like to have seen that one with a <laughs> with an audience to get to other people's It's reactions. like going into a haunted house, right? Like most of the time I'm there to see the other group's reactions <laughs> cuz I'm dead inside. Yes. Like so, yeah. I react more to the comedy than I did the, the horror stuff cuz I'm except for the one cuz <clears throat> And I say it's probably just to make up for that uh, bisecting a lady in the first movie. So he's like, I got I got an equal opportunity, so I'm going to bisect a dude. And uh, we we get the classic uh, uh, shower scene, but this time with a chainsaw. And Homeboy like gets his leg chopped off and is like trying to crawl away while 
Art's like continuing to kill the the girl, and I'm just like, that chainsaw's going in that dude's ass. I know it. He's definitely getting a chainsaw in the ass. And then sure enough, woohoo! Like I'm like, yep, there it goes. But then the the camera angle switches from like a side view to a crotch view, and you see his like Franken beans getting like chopped up. And I was like, oh no, I did not need to see that. <laughs> that was the only one. So I was, it was like, okay oh. when it was a lady hanging, but. <laughs> But still, you didn't see, I mean, you saw the saw coming between her titties, but you didn't see it like, you know, you heard it going vagina first, but they didn't show that part. But seeing the Franken beans getting <laughs> chopped up, I was like, oh. <laughs> but speaking of like Art's reactions, the girl that in that scene that gets killed, like the Santa's brother from the first movie is now in college and his roommate's girlfriend is your typical uh basic white bitch that are that is accepts hosts a true crime podcast which i think it's about every girl has a true crime podcast uh, at this point but she's like oh i want to interview you for my podcast like she's like obsessed with art and then like you see art later like creeping into the the dorm to do some killing and he hears her talking about him and it just him she's like i mean what's it like to sit across from like the 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 greatest serial killer since Jack the Ripper and he's like ooh yeah he's like you see him getting all like flattered and shit <laughs> and then she's like then her boyfriend's like sounds like you want to fuck him and she's like of course I don't want to fuck him and then he just looks like offended like what the fuck bitch <laughs> just, that whole little just like him reacting to to her talking about him was like was fucking hilarious oh yeah for sure and yeah and even when he kills her because like one of the things she says is like what's it like to like look him in the eyes or like a soul there or whatever so like he's wearing like crazy halloween sunglasses that he had picked or well no christmas sunglasses so like right as like she's about to die he like takes the glasses off and like looks her right in the eyes like here's what you wanted <laughs> <laughs> you asked for this remember <laughs> couldn't just leave well enough alone that and the the previous two movies have all been halloween themed where this one he does he did a a Christmas we don't get I mean we've done an episode on Christmas uh horror movies but yeah it's been a while since, since there's been a and a, a I'm good still new, trying to uh, figure Christmas out like horror movie if this makes Christmas horror or not like I, I'm kind of torn on this one hmm. like because we're still in October so. It, does it count as Christmas horror if it's set at Christmas but doesn't get released at Christmas? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like we're trying to make too much out of a thing. <laughs> but I will say, like, I I knew envelopes were going to be pushed. But, you know, typically, you know, children are are left out of the fray. And, yeah. um, you know, I thought for sure we were about to see, you know, dead children, <laughs> but like, I feel like that was a line that, you know, is kind of a, a hard cross for most people, but you know, like I, I think to the director's credit, it's like, you yeah, know, he... a kid is getting axed right now, but we're not just going to lay it out there for you to see. Yeah. He, there is, he definitely kills some children in this movie, but. They did it all off yeah, camera. Implied. Implied. Yeah. I mean, it starts off like kind of the pre credit scene of of art like coming in a house dressed like Santa Claus and just I mean, he does axe up the the older brother, but you know, once he finds like the youngest kid it, it cuts. And then later on he shows up at the uh at the mall dressed as the mall Santa and starts passing out gifts and shit. And there was a stuffed possum in one of those uh, packages. I was like, that's, that's kind of cool. A little plushy possum. But then one of them's a bomb. Cause arts, you know, art does everything, but yeah, you see the explosion, but you don't see the like aftermath of the, <laughs> the, uh, the kids that definitely got like, like you know, could you just imagine like, little tiny arms and legs everywhere? Yeah. So, you know, even that there's, there's a, uh, because even in the first one, like he's kill or not first one, the second one, he's killing uh, that girl and her mom, and the kids knock on the door for like trick or treat, and then he comes out with like the mom's severed head using it as a candy bowl, and is like passing out candy to the kids and shit, and it's like, 
all right, yeah, art, art's not gonna fuck with the kids, but like, no, he just <laughs> art kills everybody. <laughs> it's just whether or not you're currently like in his uh, crosshairs or not. I don't know. I have a new fear of riding buses, though. Because Art is a big fan of public transportation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. And, yeah. I, and that's another thing, too, is, like, you don't see in a lot of these, like, slasher movies where the killer has become famous in-universe. So there's people dressing up as Art as for Halloween costumes. <laughs> and, um, you know, after he... The series of events directly after the first movie, basically, you know, he goes and gets his head back and uh, finds the uh, Vicky, who's now possessed by the the pale girl, and they're getting on the bus to like go find some place to, I guess, regenerate, and they're just like covered in fucking blood because you know, dude's got his head chopped off, and then they ate a couple people at the hospital, and there's a guy like gets on the bus dressed as Art. And he's like, oh, oh my god, y'all's costumes are great. Like, I thought about doing the blood thing, but I was like, man, the cleanup's got to be a bitch. And they're just all like, you know, kind of smiling at him. Like, yeah, cool. And then you cut to next, you see Art, like, completely clean again. I'm like, yeah, that dude didn't make it off the bus. <laughs> Art got him a fresh suit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, eh, I don't have to go to the cleaners now. <laughs> ah, speaking of which, him and Vicky. Vicky is a twisted one. Yeah. Uh, th- there was parts of that that I didn't quite expect to see either. Uh, I think yeah. she's uh, got a little... Uh, knife diddling? Knife diddling. Oh. <laughs> With her piece of glass. Yep. One girl, one glass. Oh. Yeah, and then Art's like, shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you know that was a uh, that was a direction in this one too um, that you know kind of generated um, a little bit of controversy. You know, like putting uh, the crown of thorns on and uh, that sort of thing. Like we yeah, a lot more really religious had, you know, iconography in this one. Than they're you know they're like let's make it clear this bitch is a demon. <laughs> like the first one was like is she a demon? Or is he, cause like at the one point you see the pale girl and then you cuts to someone else's perspective and you see like art basically playing patty cake with himself. So you're like, is she real or is she just a figment of arts? Like fucked up uh psychosis. So this time it's like, no, no, we're making it clear. That bitch is a demon. <laughs> so I, I don't know. You know, I, I get, you know, the context. It's not like they were like, Hey, we're going to throw in some, you know, religious shit. But, you know, I mean, it was kind of great. Like, I mean, dude, this, you know, it had things that reminded me of The Exorcist. It had things that reminded me of uh, Texas Chainsaw. It had, you know, <laughs> like. Oh, yeah. And the first one when when Art kind of goes full leather face and like is wearing the uh, the homeless lady's skin. <laughs> it's just like, ooh, I'm a pretty lady. <laughs> Getting some Silence of the Lambs type vibes now, like, you know. Just, uh. I don't know, for me, it, it was kind of everything. And and I I gotta say, I think I appreciated the shorter run time of this one than the second one. Yeah, there was some things that think that they, I mean, it was still like two hours, two, I think two hours I mean, and five I felt minutes. like I got my money's worth, but at the same time, like... Where the first one, it seemed, or not first one, the second one, it seemed like there was some scenes that just went on for, for fucking ever. Like, I mean, when he kills homegirl and like literally rubs salt in the wounds, I was like, God damn, how long is this fucking murder gonna, <laughs> gonna last? But um, I mean, if you think about the, the shower scene in the third one, dude, like that shit drug on for like four or five minutes. Yeah. I feel like each movie he has like a a centerpiece to kill. Yes. Like, where it's like, all right, we're going to put a lot of, and it's not, and it's not, not always like the final kill of the film. It's like, no, like the, the first one, it was, you know, girl getting sawed in half. The second one, um, a girl in her bedroom. Who's like, still like, that is the most dead I've seen in a live person. Like the fact that she's like, starts talking 
mom. Like when, like, oh man, that bitch is fucked up. <laughs> then literally rubbing salt in the wounds is, and then like I said, this one probably that that sour scene went on for a minute. Yeah, but then again too, and then like, the doing snow angels in the blood puddle at yeah. the end. I was like, that's just. I said he'll do something super fucked up, and then he's like, "Hey, woo, I'm a clown." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about the him playing Santa, him fangirling over Santa. Yes, like, that is probably one of the highlights of this movie is him kind of walking down the street with his. And before that, you see him building like new weapons and shit. Once he wakes up from his like five year nap, and he's like basically, uh, I guess, puts a fire extinguisher hose on a can of liquid nitrogen and makes like a, a fucking freeze gun. But you you see him walk by a bar and look in and you see a, there's a Santa Claus and his like old buddy in there. And he's like fucking the joy that is on art's face. He's like, Oh shit. It's Santa Claus. <laughs> it was so, and it's like, um, I can't remember the actor playing Santa Claus, but he's like, one of those character actors that have been in like a ton of things. And then Clint Howard, fucking Ron Howard's weird ass brother. That's in all kind of movies. At first I thought it was like booger from, uh, from, uh, uh revenge of the nerds. Like, oh no, it's fucking Clint Howard. <laughs> but yeah, the fucking this, the joy of meeting like Santa Claus was, I was like, that's hilarious until it turns not hilarious, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Uh, but he's like, yeah, come on in, clowny. Like, and like, he just like immediately like tugs on his beard. He's like, hey, easy, it's it's real. Like, you know, if you don't have a real beard, you're not a real Santa Claus. And then later, you see what happens. <laughs> Art wearing the beard. Yes, he like fucking freezes Santa's like face, and then like rips his damn beard off. And like when he shows up at the mall as the as the mall Santa, he's wearing like. <laughs> the dead Santa's beard. It's like, hey, you said I had to have a beard to be a real, <laughs> a real Santa Claus. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, him just like hanging out, like fucking just having a good old time at the bar with Santa. Well, I just love, I love the thing too, like you know where he's acting like a kid, and they buy him a shot, and he does his shot and just instantly spits it out like. <laughs> right in Santa's face too, and then, yeah. and then pisses on his leg, <laughs> and then that's when it turns uh, <laughs> turns wrong for the. But before that, he's like, and I like the dirty old man, his buddy, when like the two hot chicks are trying to get pictures with Santa Claus. She's like, "Hey, can I slide down your chimney?" And the old man's like, "Hey, I got a chimney. He can slide down it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not married. I'll fuck you. <laughs> Cause Santa's like, oh no, your Mrs. Claus won't like that. And the other guy's like, hey, I'm single. I'll fuck yeah. I got a, I got a chimney. <laughs> the creepy old dude at the bar. Oh, but yeah, that whole scene up until things go wrong for <laughs> for Santa it was absolutely like comic gold. And speaking of like classic actors, I mean, we even got a, a, a Tom uh, Savini Tom uh, Savini cameo as one of the the witnesses on on the you see the news coverage of the uh, of the uh, attack at the at the mall. Did Tom have any hand on any of the effects on this one? I don't. I don't. I don't think, think so. so. It's, uh, Daniel Roebuck is the guy that was playing uh, Santa Claus. Yeah, he's been in a bunch of shit. Uh, I know Chris Jericho was in the film. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that, too, that he was, like, one of the, like, security guard orderlies at the Insane Asylum. Because, like, when I first saw him, I'm like, who is that dude? That dude looks familiar. Like, I thought it was, like, you know, because a lot of these horror guys like sneaking in, like, Kane Hodder or, you know, other famous horror actors. And I'm like, that's a big dude. I'm like, is that... Who is that? And I'm like, oh fuck, that's Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> like completely, like you know, missed that for a second. Oh, what about the? Uh... Do you have a favorite kill so far? Oh, or let's turn it down. New movie. What do you think the? Uh... You know, if we, if if this was dead meat, what would get the golden chainsaw? <laughs> uh, literally the chainsaw. 
Uh, but I mean, I think that's too easy. You know, because like I said, he's he's always got to do something a little bit different. He's he's always trying to come up with new. Uh, I mean, the fact that new he kills put out a legit machine gun, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, you know, that's that's kind of the unspoken rule for like. You, you don't see Freddy or Jason or any of the classic slasher whipping out, you know. And and, and the other thing, too, is uh, the innovativeness of the things where he's pulling out his bag of tricks and, you know, he's got the cat of nine tails. He's got, you know, all these other his, like, freeze, barbaric, you know, His freeze gun that he, uh, that he invents for this one. We're just like, I'm going to ice people and then smash their their hands and dude eventually face i i'd almost forgot about that like that's got to be up there too yeah the liquid nitrogen's uh death was was pretty fucking brutal because it wasn't it wasn't quick it's like let me freeze your feet and hands first and then smash those and then i'll finally freeze your head uh (laughs) and rip it off or take your beard off first before i smash your your head in the Sienna, like, you know, wakes up from her, you know, she's, everyone thinks she's crazy when she's like, actually like, no, Art's coming back. He's definitely back. I need to go dig my sword up from where I buried it and and be prepared for war. But, you know, she takes a nap and has has some flashbacks, which we'll get that into a second, but then wakes up and, well, yep, Art's already here and him and his, uh, his uh, demon Vicky has uh, already killed my, my uncle and, and uh, my aunt is all tied up, but yeah, how and and the uncle just being stapled, you know, uh... <laughs> his head used as the tree topper, and then Art like fucking using his intestines as uh as garland around the tree and shit. Because cause that's one of the things that um, Demon Vicky says, she's like, oh, I want your body now, but I can't enter it until you've like lost all hope. Like Art has to break you before I'm able to take over. So I'm gonna horribly kill everyone you love. Like starting with your your aunt here, which first they like reveal that like oh where's Gabby, and there's like a, a head in a in a cage full of rats, and it's like you know make her think she he's she's killed her her kind of little cousin, but then the way he, he kills like Auntie with the the tube, tube of rats and- down the throat and then and then slicing her open and the fucking rats just spill out like some kind of fucked up pinata. I was like all right that's that's pretty nasty and, and inventive. I've I've not seen <laughs> seen that recently. Yeah, I mean, I can. There was an old '70s horror movie called Rats, and a girl falls asleep naked in a sleeping bag, and rat goes Ooh. inside her, and you know it cuts, and the rat's like coming out of her mouth at that point. Remember. One of the piranha movies. It might have been Double D, where the piranha goes inside the girl, yeah. and then they're having sex, and it bites the dude's dick off. <laughs> I tried to find uh, the piranha film, dude. They they are hard to find now. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've watched them. I uh, I don't remember where I watched them uh, last. But uh, yeah. And they just got more and more ludicrous as as that series went on too. But. Uh, yeah. Fast and the Furious had the rat under the bucket. Yeah, that's like an old, uh, I think, like Spanish Inquisition thing. It's like you know, you heat up the bucket and the rats have to chew their way out through you to escape the uh, the fire. But then we get the reveal that oh, it's not Gabby still alive. We wanted to, you know, we didn't want to kill her off screen because we wanted you to to suffer. But it, it, and he's like. Yeah, you know, she's like, I said it wasn't Gabby, but and then like Art puts the glasses on the skull, and it's like, oh, you killed my, my fucking brother, you sons of bitches. <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm not so sure that he's dead. You know, without a body in this franchise, I don't, True I don't enough. think so. I mean, cause you- he he was a pretty. He was a pretty major character in the second film. Yeah. He kind of took a a back seat a little bit in in this film, but 
And then also, I mean, you saw Vicky imitating his voice and kind of luring in, I guess, uh, Uncle. And you definitely saw Uncle's dead ass because his head was clearly there. But you never saw them kill the brother. I mean, it. like I said, he could still be... Yeah, it's, it's weird to kill him. I mean, the the reveal of like, haha, we killed your brother. But to not show when the they, actual kill when is kind of suspicious. We're like, oh, it's Gabby at first. Like, that kind of makes me think that it's all just a, a mind fuck. Yeah, because I mean, he definitely killed plenty of other people. That could have been anybody's skull, really. And the fact that they would have killed the brother off off camera just it's seems suspicious <laughs> so i would not be surprised if we don't get like a return in the next uh in the next movie come to find out he's also immortal and has superpowers <laughs> and it's just a headless jonathan speaking of headless because at the end of the second movie you know pale girl takes art's head and uh gives it to vicky pretty much but his body comes back to life in the terrifier and kills the cop and then cuts its head off. So he gets like, it's too suspicious to be a, just a headless corpse walking around town. So I need to hold this cop's head on my shoulders. So people don't realize I'm a headless corpse. It's like, man, that costume is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah, that, that shit was well, but, um, Vicky and uh, Vicky, uh, Sienna's, uh, dream sequence where it kind of gives us a little bit of the backstory of how the sword came to be, and we we get to see her her uh, father. Uh, With great evil comes great responsibility. Sure, but you recognize her father's another like famous horror guy, sort of. It's uh the dude from uh, uh Lost Boys. Oh yeah, the yeah. older brother. <laughs> it took me a minute, and I was like, "Where do I know?" And and then I was like, "Oh fuck, Lost Boys." Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you get like this uh, Jason Patrick. Uh, it would have been amazing if it could have been like, "Cry, little sister." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hanging out in his office listening to uh, the Lost Boys soundtrack. Just really, but that uh, image of. It's like a looks looks like a statue of the Virgin Mary with some kind of demon armor on like a chain making him build this like angel sword to fight demons or whatever. And you it looks just like that was a cool effect. Cause it looked like a statue until the demon tries to like get away and it like all of a sudden comes to life and jerks his ass back to <laughs> puts him back in, you know, all right, I'll go back to making the fucking sword. But yeah, I was like I did not know that was a lady in a costume until it moved. I was like, oh, shit, that looks fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that whole kind of... Uh... I mean, who better to build a demon fighting sword than a demon? But yeah, he's like fucking the Virgin Mary got that bitch on lock. Like, motherfucker, you make my sword. I'm going to fuck you up. He's <laughs> like, going to go gangster and like yank him on his chain. But yeah, the, the weird demon thing with like the fucking man in the, the iron mask was like... I don't know if this is just a, a trippy, uh, uh, whatever acid dream you got going on here, but I definitely prefer this to the, uh, clown house, uh, dream sequence from the second movie. <laughs> Everyone come down to the clown cafe. <laughs> fucking song gets stuck in your, your fucking head. Uh, just random quirkiness. Now I got the song in my head. Thanks, Joe. Oh, you know that's going to be one of the intros or outros to this video, so everyone else has to suffer through that being stuck in their head as well. I, I know nothing anymore. <laughs> Speaking of which, like, uh, oh, and then the uh, you you kind of see so many like connections to other horror franchises. You you can tell like. The director is a real like horror fan because the Sienna's been in like a 
mental health facility off and on for the last five years, apparently, because, of course, you know, having to fight a demon clown is going to give you PTSD. But when she's at the dinner table and starts, like, hallucinating her friend from the previous film that got, like, all fucked up, and she's like, bitch, just pass me the rice. I'm not going to go away. You pass me the rice. I'm like, oh, this reminds me of... uh, American Werewolf in London, where he just—he like everyone he kills, he keeps, just gets haunted by their ghosts. Yeah, just like you know, just like the you know, her friend just being like still like completely like just blood covered and fucked up at the family dinner table was just, was like, oh this is this is this is uh, looks looks cool just the just the uh, offset of like horror around this nice family you know dinner table scene. <laughs> We all need some cereal. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, I forgot you don't like cereal anymore. And you're like, bitch, you read my diary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see where you would have a, you would not like Rice Krispie treats after, uh, <laughs> after all the, the the shit in the last movie with the the Artos or whatever they were called. So much cross merchandising for this <laughs> franchise too. I have an art jersey. I was gonna wear it, but it's white, and I was like, "No, I'm gonna ash on it." <laughs> I mean, I got my Ghostface uh, uh, horror movies and chill shirt. Uh, so I, I, I need I need to art some art merchandise now. It's like I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm sold. Art. I'm like, I figured once you gave this series a chance, like I'm like, dude, like. On the surface, yeah, I can see where it's like, eh, I'm not so sure. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. Just <laughs> give it a chance. Yeah, like like I said earlier, it's like watching something from the '80s. But and and that's not an insult. It like I said, it's that's kind of the classic era of the. I mean, is slasher your favorite genre of horror? Um, yeah, for for me, definitely. I mean, you know. Texas Chainsaw, absolute, you know, all-time favorite. Um, you know, that paved the way, you know. I grew up on Jason and Freddy and Chucky and all the, the, the classics. And, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, you get a lot of those nods, but then you get, like I said, you know, the, you know, pinhead, you know, type, Hellraiser type shit going mm-hmm. on here. You get, you know, a little bit of Exorcist, like... <laughs> You know, this, to me, as as this series progresses, it just, you know, subtle nods and montages to, you know, yeah, all great it, things with, with you know, modern twist. And it's been a while since we've had a horror icon. Like, I think the last, I mean, a lot of, a lot of horror movies now are one-offs, something supernatural or it's uh like i said the the gore porn that we had for a while um i mean maybe uh uh jigsaw was probably like the last like jigsaw or or uh ghost face probably like the last like but see i don't really you know like it's been like, a while for me it's been know? a while since we've had a new like horror to, icon to me to get like behind. The the Saul franchise, I, I don't I don't even really classify it as horror. It's more you know it, psychological it, thriller in my opinion. You know, it's like and it's more into that torture porn category, but not as like blatant as say the uh, Hostel or some shit like that. But even those like what we think like the the it's an engineering marvel, Joe. <laughs> yeah, the newest for the uh, betterment of one's lives. If you choose to live. The newest, like, horror icon. Yeah, if you go with, like, Jigsaw and Ghostface, those guys started in the 90s. So it's been at least probably 20 years since we've had a new, like, here's our new horror guy. So it's like, you know, everything else has been, like, you know, sequels or, you know, bringing back, like, the OGs with, like, remakes and shit. But, yeah, it's been a while since someone's created a new horror character for the... For the the modern era, era. I just like that it's unique. Yes, and in, in a time of remakes and reboots, it's like art's a art's a a new thing. It's like it's a work of art. 
little shameless plug for folks that are fans of, uh, you know, um, art and metal and whatnot, uh, should definitely check out Ice Nine's Kill um, video for the work of art. Yeah, uh, and it's not only got uh, the actual art in it. I mean, it's got David, or uh, it's got Damon uh, Leone. I mean, it's got the director. It's got the producer. It's like got all the people from, you know, Terrifier in the the music video, and pretty much everyone dies. <laughs> I think Art gets a mini gun in this the, one. It's the most <laughs> metal concert ever. <laughs> everyone except for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but even even the birthing scene. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then you get the the kind of like the post because all their videos are like cinematic and shit. You get the dude from Weekend at Bernie's is playing their manager. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> that's some old school. God, I haven't watched those movies since I was probably a young teenager. I wonder if those could still be found again. I'm just curious to see what it would be like watching Weekend at Bernie's. Uh... <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's 3. I, I, I just don't remember them all that well, you know, <laughs> to be like, does this hold up? Is it completely stupid now? Or is it like, Oh, yeah. Now I see why they're no longer, you know, doing this in the modern era. <laughs> I do like where they're, uh, uh, Gabby's like, oh, like, you're going to die before you get to open my Christmas present. And Vicky's like, oh, like, we can't let that happen. Let's fuck with you more. Yeah, go ahead. Open your Christmas present before I rip your fucking head off. And then, like, you know. She's, like, tied the chair, getting her hands smashed and shit, and, like, you know, opens up the box, like, She's like, this is what you wanted? She's like, oh, yeah, it's exactly what I wanted. And it's like, fuck you, I got a sword, motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'm going to go full Highlander and you know, cut this bitch's head off. And then she turns into, like, acid goo and me- melts a hole in the floor. <laughs> I hate when demons turn into acid goo. Uh, so, dude, that's, that's, uh, that's straight-up xenomorph territory right there. Yeah, and then Art's like, oh, my, my demon left me. Uh, I guess I'm going to go fuck off and jump on a bus. <laughs> Come back next all right, we got two Halloweens. We got a Christmas. Is Terrifier four a uh, a Thanksgiving movie? <laughs> it's totally gonna be Valentine's or something. It's Arbor Day. <laughs> <laughs> just Art shows up in a tree costume. Just completely random like that. That would be <laughs> funny. Or it's New Year's. I mean, Eve. we don't have an Arbor Day horror film that. Uh... Oh, no, there is a movie with like l- trees coming to life and killing people. Yeah, that's Lord of the Rings. They're called Ents. No, I think there is like a tree, like uh, it might even be called tree. I don't. I, it's vague. Like I remember. I think. I mean, I do remember from Evil Dead. You know, we all remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what you know. With all these like classic horror people cameos, you now the budget's getting up there. Get a, a Bruce Campbell uh, appearance in the. <laughs> Is art a deadite? <laughs> Whoa. I mean, <laughs> could be possible. Brought back to life by demons. And since his his demon... I mean, uh, you know, and, and Homegirl does have a diary that we haven't got to see yet. Nope. Did some some Necronomicon stuff in there? <laughs> Necrocom Oh, there we go. Necrocomicon? <laughs> yes. Art shows up at a horror convention. Like I said, we now know he is famous in his universe. People are dressing up as art for like Halloween. We've already got the character who is the true crime podcast lady. Do we have art showing up at one of these like horror cons or one of these like true crime conventions? God, do you imagine somebody walking around Dragon Con as an art being like, oh, fuck. Is this where it all goes down? <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
I don't remember seeing the art at Dragon Con. I'm I'm surprised at that. I I saw photos of at least one, but I did not personally see it in person. Otherwise, I probably would have fangirled and yeah, died. I, I remember like you know, there's always Jason's friends. I mean, dude, we had a tons drone, of Michael like, Myers try to land on our head. Maybe that was art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's always coming up with new uh, uh, new kills. So uh, probably standing on a balcony. How's Cigar uh, nerds. <laughs> how's your Lajero holding up? It did not. <laughs> uh, it did not. It did not uh, age well. It ten years is too much for that guy. Oh <laughs> uh, well, which these... is sad because those were great run of cigars. But you know, I just wanted to try like experiment. Has the flavor kind of gotten mild on you? Or yeah, yeah, it was definitely lost some strength. Um, it was essentially going to the gas station and buying a Garcia and Vega. Um, <laughs> well, that makes me in sad. in the uh, in the tube. <laughs> oh God, but you um, don't know how long it's been there. Exactly, and yeah, I've bought some of the gas station. Not gas. Uh, grocery store uh, punches before and yeah there's not uh not as you great know, as not, something fresh you in know. the humidor but those were amazing cigars and the fact that you know i still had a couple like dude maybe we should have did that for like a 10th anniversary episode <laughs> uh which Anyway, I think uh, we've been at it that long. Yeah, I think this may be might be ten years this uh, this uh, November. I know. Actually, it might have been. We might have already passed it. I can't remember. I kind of feel like we did because I. I think it was September 11th was the first episode, but I don't remember what year at this point. I'd have to go back and. Is that why Rachel hates our podcast? Yes. <laughs> were we podcasting on my anniversary <laughs> i think it was released on the i think we recorded it like a little bit earlier in that but i'm pretty sure if i look at the 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 website it, it was that's when it was <laughs> released but we, we have recorded on her birthday before though <laughs> uh, but yeah this uh this here uh asylum not my cigar, but I mean it's in your hand. It's been in your well, mouth. Not my flavor profile, but it is medium strength. But it has kind of a not a sugary sweetness, but a a fruity sweetness, like a apricot or even a like a like a tea, like a like a almost like a tea leaf floralness to it, which I don't typically like that, but. It's not super strong. So if you like a hint of sweetness, but not full-on candy cigar, give it a try. But, you know, if you're... I would probably say stick to some of the other Asylum cigars that aren't flavored if you uh, if you want to try a good a good Asylum. Because, uh, you know, we've, we've had a few of theirs that are that are pretty good. But, yeah, this, yeah, this one I probably will not smoke again. But with that, we'll be right back with some science. And you've been watching the Cigar Nerds Podcast. Check us out on CigarNerdPodcast.com and on the ESO Network, ESONetwork.com. And don't forget, smoke them if you got them. Like, comment, and subscribe.